Welcome to Will's Barn. This building is an organic educational resource for Yo Valley and Holt Farms. The building's been restored as an environmentally friendly, low energy building. A low energy building? Well, this short video will tell you a bit more about the barn and how it works. The barn was originally constructed over 250 years ago using local limestone. It's actually built into the hillside, making best use of natural protection from the prevailing winds. It's believed that it was used by drovers as an overnight shelter for their animals. Several times a year the drovers would drive their sheep down from the Mendip pastures to the livestock markets in the valley below. The sheep wash in the yard beside the building would allow them to give the animals a good clean to help them get the best prices in auction. But the days of the drovers are long since gone, and so the barn fell into disuse. Slowly but surely, it became just a ruin, in danger of total collapse. Yo Valley's restoration project began in July 2006, and such was the state of the building by then, it involved a very significant amount of rebuilding work. This did bring some advantages though, since it allowed the restoration team to add modern building systems, such as inner cavity walls, which contribute to the very high levels of insulation in the barn today. From the outset of the project, Yo Valley envisaged an eco-friendly, low-impact building to stay very much in keeping with the environment around it. This means that the plans had to consider three distinct elements. The construction methods and materials used in the restoration, careful design to minimise the amount of energy needed to run the building, and the selection of, it, of energy systems for heat, light and power that would be, as far as possible, carbon neutral. The abundance of natural wood in the barn gives some pretty obvious clues to the approach that's been taken. The floorboards are reused from another building, as you can see from the original nail marks in them, and the beams are of sustainably grown green oak from the southwest. Hidden behind the plasterboard linings of the walls, in the roof, and even under the floor, are the highest levels of insulation to keep the building warm, even in the coldest Mendip winter. The same natural approach applies to the internal doors and to the furniture selected for the project. The overall design of the building takes full advantage of natural light, both upstairs and down, to minimise the need for artificial lighting. Upstairs, the double glazed roof light floods daylight down through the staircase below it. The north facing, fully glazed gable end provides glare free ambient light and of course makes the most of the spectacular view across the Yo Valley. Good design can dramatically reduce the need for artificial lighting or expensive space heating, but there are clearly going to be times when such things will be needed. So the second phase of delivering this low energy building was to install only energy efficient appliances and systems. The lighting uses only low energy bulbs. These ones just use 16 watts of power each. Downstairs some relatively new technology LED downlighters each use only 1 watt rather than the normal 20 or even 50 watts consumed by regular halogen bulbs. If you switch on every bulb in the building, and please don't, the total power consumption is less than 200 watts. That's equivalent to just two normal household filament bulbs. Other electrical appliances are low energy here too. For example, most modern fast boiling household kettles use an amazing 3000 watts. I think we must be just too busy to wait for a kettle to boil. But it's easy to forget that the unused water left in the kettle after use has wasted electricity and contributed to CO2 emissions. The kettle here uses only 1000 watts, so you have to be patient. The third and perhaps most novel aspect of the project is the supply of electricity, heat and water. The building has its own electricity generating system, which runs with no connection to the national grid at all. South facing solar panels, more properly known as photovoltaic cells, turn daylight into electricity, even on a dull winter's day. In bright sunshine, the 12 panels will produce up to 2000 watts. A control room downstairs contains the clever electrical equipment that turns the rather variable output of the solar panels into usable 240 volt domestic power. 
This controller manages the solar panels and it gives a readout of the instantaneous power that they are generating. In this case about 1600 watts. The electricity that comes from it is direct current at about 48 volts. So the next piece of clever electronics is the transformer and inverter. This turns the electricity into the 240 volt alternating current with which we are more familiar. A second readout tells us how much power we are drawing out of the domestic system. In this case, 1900 watts, which is slightly more than the panels are generating. And a third readout is a digital meter counting up the total kilowatt hours that we've used. At home, this is the meter that would be read to see how much your electricity bill would be for the quarter. Here it's just a point of interest, since the electricity at Will's Barn is absolutely free. The solar panels only generate power during the day, of course, and even then there may be times when the demand exceeds supply. So there's a bank of heavy-duty 48 volt batteries which can store two to three days worth of use. As far as heating the barn was concerned, a range of options was considered and a biofuel pellet boiler was chosen. It burns sawdust, a byproduct of sawmills, which has been compressed into pellets. These are fed automatically from the hopper at the back of the boiler into the hearth and a small electrical fan drives the flames up through the water jacket. It's computer controlled, the readout here shows the water temperature, and the timer will allow the boiler to light automatically at a predetermined time, just like a conventional central heating device. The hot water is pumped around the thermostatically controlled central heating radiators and the boiler will generate up to 22 kilowatts of heat, more than enough for a building of this size. When it comes to water supply, the barn doesn't require much, especially compared to a house where baths, showers and a washing machine are high volume users. The biggest use of water here is to flush the toilets, and it makes no sense to use purified drinking water for this. So rainwater is captured from the gutters. It runs down these chains into a special drain. The water is then directed through a filter into an underground storage tank and is then pumped back up to the toilet systems when it's needed. This supply also feeds the boot wash tap by the door. The only drinking water outlets are at the sinks and the taps in the toilet hand wash sinks even have an automatic timer to reduce the water used. Of course, a low energy building is only as good as the people who use it. If we leave switches on and don't think sustainably, then all the good work in design has really been lost. So we need you to think a bit about how you use the building. Please shut the doors and windows so that we don't waste heat. If it's getting too warm, we can turn down the radiator thermostats or even switch off the boiler. The electricity at the barn may be free, but it's certainly not unlimited. Excessive use could easily drain the batteries, particularly in winter. So please, switch off lights unless you really need them. And be aware that a computer projector uses more than 250 watts, more than all the lights on the building switched on together. So switch it off when it's not needed. If you use the kitchen sink, please save hot water by using the washing up bowl, and don't leave the tap running unnecessarily. Well, I hope this video has been helpful, uh, at least understanding some of the aspects of uh, a low energy building like Will's Barn. Of course, you don't have to apply or install solar panels to take some of the ideas back to your own workplace and home. So I hope some of those are applicable to you. If you'd like to find out more about Will's Barn, click on the link on the Yo Valley Organic website or the Yo Valley Group website.